Okay, so today we're doing a deep dive into OpenAI. Sounds good. We're going beyond just the surface level stuff, you know, the headlines. Well, sure. We're trying to give the real deal on OpenAI. Yeah. And um, we're going to be using this uh, fascinating book called OpenAI, The Renaissance of Knowledge. Okay, cool. To kind of help us uncover what makes this organization so different in the world of AI. Yeah, what is it about them? I mean, there's so much hype, right? It yeah. seems like they're not just building algorithms. Right. They're really trying to shape the entire trajectory of AI. Like they're saying, this is how we want AI to evolve. Yeah, it's a bold statement. It is very bold. Especially for a tech company to make, you know? Right, and, and this idea of, you know, for the benefit of everyone, that's a big claim. It is, it is, and, and it's right there in their mission statement, like explicitly. Ensure that artificial general intelligence, AGI, benefits all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like a marketing thing. Yeah, you see that a lot with companies. It, I, where it's like, oh, it's just a nice sentence someone came up with. It sounds good on paper. Right. But this feels different. It does. It feels like it's actually ingrained in how they're structured, their research, the way they collaborate. Yeah, you get the sense that they really believe it, which is unusual, to say the least. Yeah, and, you know, normally when you hear about tech companies with these grand visions, it's easy to be a little skeptical, right? Oh, absolutely. But the team behind OpenAI, it's hard to dismiss them. Why is that? Well, we're talking tech giants and major thought leaders here, right? Right. Like Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Reid Hoffman, Peter Thiel. Okay, so we're talking big names. Huge names. All right, so these aren't just some random people in a garage. No. And even Elon Musk was involved early on. Wow. So they had some serious backing from the start. Absolutely. And these are people who put their money where their mouth is, right? Collectively, they've invested over a billion dollars into this. That's a serious amount of money. So what were they hoping to achieve? Was it just about making a profit? That's the thing. It wasn't. Mm. It seems like they were united by this shared concern that AI has immense power obviously. Right. And that power could be used for good or bad. Exactly. And that if it's developed recklessly, there could be very real risks for everyone. Yeah. That's a concern a lot of people share. And they wanted to guide its development in a way that benefits, you know, everyone, like their mission statement says. So it's less of a traditional startup story and more like a group of visionaries coming together to kind of steer AI in the right direction. That's a great way to put it. It's interesting because it sounds like they saw the potential dangers of AGI long before it became a mainstream concern. They really did. They were ahead of the curve on that. And it seems like they were willing to put their money where their mouth was to address those concerns. Exactly. And that brings us to OpenAI's track record, which is, to be honest, pretty astounding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've made incredible strides, even from their early work on reinforcement learning. Okay, so remind me, what's reinforcement learning again? So essentially, they were teaching machines to learn through trial and error. Interesting. By mastering games like Go and Dota 2, which sounds simple. Right, but I imagine it's much more complex under the hood. Oh, absolutely. But it hinted at this potential for AI to solve real-world problems. Right, because games are like simplified versions of real-world scenarios, in a way. Exactly. Okay, so that's reinforcement learning, but what about their language model, GPT? That's what they're most famous for, right? Right, and it's important to understand that GPT isn't just about, like, teaching machines to write grammatically correct sentences. Right, it goes way beyond that. Exactly, it's about creating AI that can understand and generate human-like text which is a whole other level. And they've had some incredible breakthroughs with GPT, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. The yeah, evolution is mind-blowing. Like, yeah. GPT-2 was impressive when it came out. Right, I remember that. But then GPT-3, that was a total game-changer. It really was. Suddenly, everyone was talking about the potential of AI to write like a huge... And they were so concerned about potential misuse that they initially hesitated to release the full model. Wow, really? That's a pretty big deal. It was a huge deal, and it shows how seriously they take the implications of their work. That's good to hear, because with great power comes great responsibility, right? Exactly. So GPT-3 was a big leap forward, but what about GPT-4? What's new there? Well, GPT-4 pushed the boundaries even further, and honestly, the anticipation for GPT-5 is palpable. Like, it feels like they're on the cusp of something truly revolutionary. It does feel like that, doesn't it? Like... Something big is about to happen in the world of AI. Yeah, it's an exciting time. It really is. But before we get too caught up in the future, let's not forget about OpenAI's other achievements, like their work in robotics, for example. Oh, right. 
the Rubik's Cube solving robot. That was incredible. Yeah, that was pretty wild to see, wasn't it? But it's more than just a cool trick, right? Think about the dexterity, the problem solving, the adaptation required for a machine to do that. It's mind boggling when you think about it. It really is. And it suggests that they're not just interested in AI that can write poetry or play games. They're pushing towards robots that can operate effectively in the real world. Which is both exciting and, you know, a little bit daunting. Oh, absolutely. It's like we're on the verge of a sci-fi movie. Right. But it's happening right now. It is. And that's what makes OpenAI so fascinating. They're not just focused on what AI can do, but what it should do. They're really invested in those ethical considerations, which is something we'll dig into more a little later. And that's why I think this deep dive is so important. It's not just about understanding the technology, but understanding the people behind it. The visionaries. Exactly. And the choices they're making that will shape the future of AI. Because it's not just about lines of code and algorithms, right? No, not at all. It's about us. It's about humanity and how we choose to shape this technology for the betterment of everyone. Well said. And that's something we should all be thinking about. Absolutely. So let's take a moment to reflect on that. Yeah, it was. And we'll be back right after this. Sounds good. Welcome back to our deep dive on OpenAI. And before the break, we were talking about their ethical stance, which I find really interesting. It's not every day you see a tech company trying to shape the entire field ethically, not just their own products. Right, and it's tough, because how do you even do that? They're walking this tightrope between groundbreaking research and this almost, I don't know, idealistic sense of responsibility. Totally, and speaking of idealistic, this whole approach they have to knowledge sharing, it's fascinating. It's like they're knowledge philanthropists or something. Yeah, it's like those ancient libraries, you know? Mm -hmm like the Library of Alexandria trying to gather all the world's knowledge in one place. It's a good analogy, and I think it speaks to their belief that AGI's benefits shouldn't be hoarded, but shared to speed up progress. Think about their education programs or open competitions like the OpenAI Gym. Even their willingness to help potential competitors, it's wild. It is. It's like they're saying, hey, creating a good AGI future, that's bigger than any one company. But it's not just talk, right? What are some concrete ways you see their knowledge sharing making a difference right now? Well, look at education. Their work has helped create new online learning platforms, open source textbooks, tools that make knowledge accessible to basically anyone with the internet. That's huge. It's democratizing education in a way we haven't really seen before. Exactly. And it's not just education. Remember the COVID-19 vaccines, how fast those were developed? OpenAI was part of that global effort, using their models to help researchers understand the virus. That's right. Dude. That's knowledge sharing with real, tangible results, you know, saving lives. Absolutely. And it's not limited to just those two things. I mean, what about healthcare in general? Healthcare is huge for them. They're working on new diagnostic tools, personalized treatment plans, even speeding up drug discovery, all using AI. Okay, now I'm really seeing the impact. But with all this openness, how do they deal with the risks? Sharing's one thing, but how do you stop something as powerful as AI from being misused? Well, that's where their careful approach to open sourcing comes in. Remember, they've talked about the risks of just releasing everything publicly, especially their most advanced stuff like GPT-3. It's like they're trying to find that balance between promoting progress but not enabling harm at the same time, right? Right, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with the fact that their work has this dual nature. It can be used for good or bad. Mm -hmm. And they're not just relying on themselves to figure that out. They're talking to the community, getting feedback, working with other groups. So it's like they're building a safety net as they climb higher on this AI ladder. That's a good way to put it. And it's not just safety either. What about bias in those models? You're training them on tons of data. If that data is biased, the AI can be biased too. That's a really good point. How are they handling that? Because that feels like a huge challenge. They're very open about the fact that it's a work in progress, honestly. They're researching ways to reduce bias in the data, but it's complex. There's no easy fix. So acknowledging the limitations, working towards solutions, that's good to hear. Not every company is willing to do that. No, they'd rather pretend the problem doesn't exist. But even with the best intentions, OpenAI has its critics. Have you heard about some of the other concerns people have? I have. One of the biggest ones I hear is about how they're moving away from being totally open source. People say it goes against their whole thing about transparency, right? It's a common criticism. Yeah. And they've responded directly to it, saying that, look, releasing everything, especially the really powerful stuff, is just too dangerous. 
Imagine if GPT-3 fell into the wrong hands yeah. and was used to spread misinformation. It's kind of terrifying when you think about it. it. It'd be incredibly convincing and very hard to combat. So it's about balancing that desire for transparency with the potential consequences, right? Exactly. And it's tough. There's no perfect answer. But OpenAI is still way more transparent than a lot of companies in the field. They publish a lot of research. They're involved in conversations. That's good to hear. It seems like they're really trying to find that middle ground. Yeah, they want to push the boundaries, but do it in a responsible way. Yeah. But beyond the criticisms, they're also just straight up misconceptions about what they're doing. Oh, totally. Like one I hear all the time is that GPT is sentient, like it's self-aware, has feelings, all of that. Right. People hear it writing poems and think it's some kind of super intelligence. I get it, though. It's easy to think that when you see how human-like it can write. For sure. But yeah. the reality is it's still just an algorithm, a really, really complex one, but an algorithm nonetheless. No need to worry about GPT-3 taking over the world then. Not yet, at least. But on a serious note, it's important to remember that even though it can write like us, it doesn't actually understand what it's writing. Mm -hmm. It's not thinking or feeling anything. That's an important distinction. People might start treating it like a person, but it's really not. Exactly. And that's why these discussions are so important. We have to separate the hype from reality, look at both the potential and the limitations. Speaking of which, another misconception is that OpenAI is just laser focused on these big language models, like GPT is all they care about. But there's more to it, right? Way more. GPT gets all the headlines, but they're into robotics, computer vision, reinforcement learning, even game theory. They want to apply AI to a ton of different fields. Wow. So healthcare, education, we talked about those, but what else? Think bigger, like climate change, economics, these huge issues. So they really are trying to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges with AI. That's their whole thing, creating a future where AGI makes the world better. And they're looking everywhere for how to do that. And again, it comes back to the people involved, right? It's not just the tech itself. It's their values, their decisions that matter. 100%. OpenAI gets that the future of AI isn't set in stone. It's being shaped right now by all of us. And by being open about their work, talking to people, getting different viewpoints, they're letting everyone be part of that. It's a powerful message. And honestly, it makes me think about why deep dives like this are so important. We need to look beyond the surface, understand the details, have these conversations. We do. Because the future of AI, it's not something being done to us. We're all creating it every right. single day. And the more we know, the better we can face the challenges and opportunities that come with it. And speaking of challenges, one of the biggest concerns I hear is about jobs, right? People are afraid AI will automate everything and we'll all be out of work. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. And it's something OpenAI takes very seriously. Yeah. But their view is that AI should be used to help humans, not replace them. So more like robots making our jobs better and less robots taking our jobs. Right? Uh -huh. Exactly. Imagine AI doing all the boring, repetitive tasks and humans get to focus on creative, interesting, fulfilling work. Doctors could use AI for faster, more accurate diagnoses. Teachers could tailor lessons to each student. It's a much more optimistic view than what you usually hear, the whole robots are coming for us thing. It is, and it's based on the idea that AI, when done right, can actually create a more equal and prosperous future for everyone. It's about seeing AI as a tool, not a threat, a partner, something that can help us create positive change. And that's the vision OpenAI is working towards, which is exciting. It is. But we're going to have to leave it there for now. We'll be back in just a bit to wrap up our deep dive on OpenAI, talking about the global impact of their work, their vision for the future, and what it all means for you. Stay with us. And we're back. Got to say, this deep dive into OpenAI has been fascinating. Going beyond the headlines, you really get a feel for what drives this organization, you know? It's been a journey for sure. I mean, they started with reinforcement learning, teaching AI to master games, which seemed almost like a novelty at the time, at least to someone like me. Right. But it was the foundation for something much bigger. And then they develop GPT, jump into robotics. They just keep pushing the boundaries of what AI can do. They're ambitious, that's for sure. Mm. But what's really impressive is that they're trying to do it responsibly, you know, the focus on ethics the knowledge sharing, even facing the criticisms head on, that's not something you see every day. Definitely not. It really shows their commitment to building a better future with AI, not just a more advanced one, if that makes sense. Exactly. And it gets to the heart of AI itself. Mm. This tech is powerful, could be amazing, could be scary. So it's not enough to just make it stronger. We got to make sure it's used for good. Couldn't agree more. 
And that's where OpenAI stands out, right? They're not just writing algorithms, they're building a vision, a future where AI benefits everyone, like their mission statement. It's ambitious, but they're actually working towards it. Ah. And they're not trying to do it alone, which I find encouraging. <laughs> yeah, they really believe in collective intelligence, bringing people together. They're fostering collaboration, encouraging open discussions, want to hear from diverse voices. It's refreshing, honestly. In a world obsessed with competition, they're choosing collaboration. It's a different approach, that's for sure. And it shows that the future of AI, well, it's not set in stone, is it? We all have a role to play in shaping it. 100%. Our choices today will determine what AI looks like tomorrow. And the more informed we are, the better those choices will be. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, what are some key things you hope our listeners take away from this conversation about open AI? Hmm. Well, if they remember just one thing, I hope it's that AI isn't some separate entity. You know, it's a reflection of us, our values, our hopes, even our fears. The AI we build will be a mirror to who we are. That's a powerful thought. It means we're not just along for the ride. We're actually the ones driving this technological revolution. We are. And that means we've got to stay informed, think critically, question what we hear. Don't just accept everything about AI as gospel truth. Dig deeper. Love that. Be curious. Ask questions. Form your own opinions. Don't just follow the hype. Exactly. If this deep dive sparked even a little bit of that curiosity in our listeners, then I consider it a success. Me too. And to our listeners, if you're interested in learning more, do your own research. Keep the conversation going. The future of AI depends on it. It really does. Because like we've been saying, the future of AI, that's not something being done to us. We're all creating it right here, right now. So well said. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into open AI. Thanks for joining us. Keep those questions coming. And until next time, happy diving, everyone.